Today in class we had a fairly short lesson and it's the last one of this unit involving geometric sums. So basically what we did yesterday, how to find the summation of those things and some formulas we can use to have a shortcut. The sum of a geometric sequence is, and I'm cutting out some of the details here, not because I'm trying not to be precise, but if you're really interested in the details, you can look in the book. I don't want to overwhelm you with some of the terminology here when it's really not necessary. So the sum of, of n terms would be given by the summation. Remember, that's a sigma in Greek. The summation from i equals 1 to n of a sub 1 r to the i minus 1. Now remember here, r is the common ratio. We learned how to find that yesterday. And that is equal to a 1 times 1 minus r to the nth power over 1 minus r. And that's the formula you're going to use when given this to find a summation. The reason we would want to do that is, again, we don't want to have to sum 150 terms in a row. That would take forever. So if we have a shortcut, that would be the preferable way. For example, number one, the summation from i equals 1 to 12 of 4 times 0.3 to the i minus 1. And the i minus 1 is a fairly important part of this. If you saw that again, that's how you would know it was geometric and that you could use this formula. If it doesn't have the i minus 1, you need to watch out. That's not one you could use this for. Let's pick out all of our terms, starting with the 4 replaced the a1. So that's our a1. The r is the point 0.3, and the n is the upper limit, which is 12. If you couldn't find a 1, okay, r is always whatever is being raised to whatever power. Um, n is always the upper limit. If you couldn't find a 1, you could plug in 1, where i is. 1 minus 1 is 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 1 times 4 is 4, and that would give you a 1. That would always work when you were trying to find what a 1 is if you couldn't figure it out. Um, and sometimes there isn't anything there, and then a1 is just 1. Anyways, if we plug this in the formula, we can find the sum of the first 12 terms to be 4 times 1 minus 0.3 to the 12th over 1 minus 0.3. And you can either do this in parts or do it all in one foul swoop with your calculator. If you're going to go the one swoop way, you need to be sure that you're putting it into the calculator correct correctly. And I'm trying to show you right there how to do that. I'll try to leave that on for just a second, or maybe you can pause that. Be sure you're using parentheses around the top portion and around the bottom. Also, remember, you need to be careful to be using parentheses anytime you're doing fractions, because if you don't, that's going to totally mess you up, and your answer is going to be wrong. In this case, the answer is 5.714, and we're done with that problem. And then up next and final thing we need to talk about is the sum of an infinite and I've been misspelling that word all day, the infinite geometric sequence. And remember, if I'm talking about something that is infinite, um, that's what my summation is. So summation from i equals, in this case, 0 to infinity of a sub 1 r to the i power is equal to a 1 over 1 minus r. Okay, before I told you you need to watch out for i minus 1, you do need to do that because that's indexing you back to what was 1 in the first part. Since this is 0, we're just starting at i. I don't mean for that to confuse you or to be real overwhelming. Um, normally it's going to be in this i minus 1 where i equals 1. If it's i equals 0, it's just going to be i. If you want more explanation on that, I can give that to you when you get back to class. Um, let's work an example like this. This is just showing us what to do if we're talking about an infinite sequence or series. And I'm sorry, my phone's going off. Hold on one second. Okay, moving right along. Example two, the summation from n equals 1 to infinity. Again, the index is 1, so this will be an i minus 1, times 4 times 0 0.6 raised to the n minus 1 power. We want to find that infinite sequence. To do that, we need to label what we know. In this case, a1 equals 4, r equals 0.6, and we don't need an n. There isn't one. It's going to infinity. 
when we plug that in, we have 4 over 1 minus 0 0.6, and that would be 4 over 0.4, which is 10. And that would be the summation of infin infinite amount of terms of this geometric sequence. That was all for today, and the assignment was A6, page 670, 53 to 56, and 79 to 80. And because of tax next week, we'll turn in A5 and A6 both on Monday of next week, so be sure that you get those taken care of. The test over sequences and series will be on Friday, so let me know if you have questions between now and then on how to do this. Good luck!